Fairy Tale 100 Years Quest Chapter 123 is currently out, and this is the last chapter we're getting for the year of 2022. And honestly, it's been quite a year, and I'm honestly glad I've covered Fairy Tale as much as I could during this year. I wish I covered it a lot sooner, but either way, I've had a lot of fun with this series, and I cannot wait to continue covering this when 2023 comes out, and what I'm trying to do more Fairy Tale content on the channel as much as I possibly can. So look forward to that. I do plan to do some more Fairy Tale stuff in 2023 and for as long as the channel is here. But yeah, this is honestly a really nice and chill chapter, more or less just set up for the next arc, and as we see some, some of my favorite characters being a reappearance in the story that we actually haven't seen since the start of this spin-off to begin with, and maybe like bounce back and forth from time to time, but I'll get into that when we get to it. So right before we get into this review, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos, it really does help and it shows you guys enjoy the fairy tale content on the channel and want to see more, and it helps with the YouTube algorithm to show that you guys enjoy the content and it will suggest this series and other videos to other people to help it spread and add more people to the community. But for now, let's just hit that intro and get right into the video. Chapter 123, aptly titled, We Are Back. Starts off with Fairy Tale and Diablos saying their farewells, saying that everything has come to an end, and Diablos is going to search for the lost weapon Athena, and Fairy Tale is going to go back to the guild hall and try and search for Viarnus and Ignea. Selene says that they'll see them soon, as Greg just says, n tells her not to bother any more human guildmates too much since they're the new master, since she's a new master, as she asks Fairy Bluntly, am I a bother? As Misaku just says, no, not really. The white tiger kid, I forgot his name, ends up saying it doesn't bother him at all, as she's much better than the last master. But Skullion just says, we do not talk about that. Selene says, yeah, it's kind of true. I didn't really feel like there was any other way to get the guild to apologize. But yeah, then everyone else just goes on to say that, yeah, they honestly feel a lot better with her around compared to the previous master. He was strong, but yeah, he wasn't exactly the best of people. Kirin says he looked after me, but uh, he couldn't stand his power and harassment. Even Misaki says, yeah, the sexual harassment was, uh, specifically was kind of very bad. And Suzaku says, I he cannot be helped for it Mark the end of tyranny. And I'm with Carlo on this one stating, wow, such harsh words. I So it does kind of show that the guild did not take kindly to George at all. So Celine ended up just doing them a favor. So I guess shock one for Celine for doing good kind of you know yeah let's mark that up as good because george sounds like a complete and total asshole and i really wish we actually got to see him actually fight celine even if celine was just like dominating the fight i'm still kind of salty on that because kind of a bit of missed potential but yeah what can you do but celine ends up giving an invitation to fairy tale telling them to come and visit anytime as everyone starts to wave their goodbyes as kieran and loxus say their goodbyes in the only way they they know how yeah, I'm basically saying that they're going to tear each other to pieces the next time they see them. They say their farewells, and the left seer basically just tells Celine until we meet again. As the left seer takes Fairy Tail off towards the distance, as he asks what they're going to do about Ignea and Viernus's whereabouts. Do they have any leads? As Nanji just says, nope. But they, 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 they say that just for a little while, they're going to head home to try and find some intel. Now, really quick, I just want to say this. You know how a lot of people complain that Fairy Tail in a lot of arcs turn their enemies into friends and this basically just happened now with Diablos I'm not upset about that honestly that's kind of like a major thing that people have have complained complaints about and I can understand it certain degrees I don't really like it all too much but I think this fits pretty well with Diablos as a whole because they're not malicious people they were just doing what their master was telling them to and it was kind of how the guild was made so they were more of an, an antagonist instead of like an actual like villain group. George does kind of sound like a villain, but either way, I'm fine with this. It makes a lot of sense, and it does show that Diablos will actually potentially, hopefully, play much more of a bigger role in Hundred Years Quest with an open invitation to come back to the Guild Hall and working together as they're each doing their own things to try and stop Ignea 
from whatever it is he's planning. Just wanted to say that right out there before we continue on with the chapter. They head back to Fairy Tale, and I like we just got the single page showing us the Fairy Tale Guild Hall. It's honestly very surreal that we spent over like over a hundred chapters since we saw the Guild Hall last. I think this is one of the longest span of us not seeing the Guild Hall since like the latter half of Fairy Tale, since like I think the Grand Magic Games and Tartar. So it's kind of just nice seeing the Guild Hall, our home still there as we run inside as everybody is rowdy as usual doing whatever it is they do having a boat boatload of fun meted by mirror jane lozana and elfman as natra just goes up and runs towards everybody even talking to makarov asking are you a fossil yet or something and i just like getting everyone's interaction seeing everybody coming back to the guild hall with juvia just lunging towards gray as she tends to do and tells gray about how she basically changed into gray on the boat back during gray's fight against uh the guy from the Golden Owl, the alchemist, and Gray then remembers, huh, so I guess that happened to Juvia as well, and I like the little interactions that Wendy has with the rest of the guildmates as they all compliment her, saying that, she's, that she seems more grown up, that she's gotten taller, and I just like the wholesome smile on Wendy's face, really, really adorable, we need to protect that smile. We then get the Thunder God tribe, being very glad to see Loxus, saying how he just disappeared out of nowhere and they were kind of worried about him, and then Makarov notices something wrong different about Loxus, and Loxus just says, so I guess you did notice, huh? Stating that he took the lacrima out that his father implanted in him, thinking that that was the source of his magic power, but it seems that he was wrong. By taking it out, he was able to show his true power. And I just really like everyone's reactions, especially like uh, Evergreen and uh, Visca and everyone saying like, you mean the power he had until now wasn't even his actual power? As they just say, he's, he's really a monster here. So honestly, I think this is, while well, symbolic, showing that Loxus doesn't need that lacrima in his chest, and again, that was a pretty metal scene when he just ripped it out of his chest and basically just left it on the ground. I think absorbing the residual magic power from the lacrima as it was in him for so long, and then devouring uh, the Thunder Dragon God's like remaining magic power and potentially the soul, still not 100% clear on that. I honestly do kind of think that it is just pure magic power that was left over, but it could just be the soul, because souls are a thing with fairy tale anyway. Uh, either way is fine. I think Loxus is still a dragon slayer, maybe like a seventh generation dragon slayer or something like that, or a sixth generation, I believe, which is honestly pretty cool, and I honestly really like it. And it shows that Loxus is even stronger now, considering that his body does kind of have stuff from the lacrim on the dragon slayer heart, and now he's got the soul, another missing piece, so he's definitely a lot stronger. So I just felt like mentioning that. I just like Loxus. He's one of my favorite characters, and just nice to see. Yeah, he ain't, he ain't out of the fight yet. Levin then comes up to scold Gajil, saying how she was worried sick about him. Josh was like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I'm sorry about what happened. It just came out of nowhere. And he even tries to make a, a joke like God Serena would do. And uh, Blue's like, wait, wait, hold on. This is this the usual sharp and witty Gajil just bombed a joke. So yeah, you can see how caught off guard and nervous Gajil is because yeah, he's usually quite witty and stuff like that. Libby then call, just kind of scolds Ganshul, just saying, you're going to be a dad. As Ganshul just smiles, saying, and you're going to be a mom, right? As the two of them just walk off on the side with Lily, just being like, eh, what can you do? They do, they are they are who they are. Let's just leave them be. We then get a comedic scene where Natsu tells the rest of the guild hall about how Lucy got stuck on a wall. And, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go over it. It was a funny scene. I don't know why it had to be brought up again, but, again... Probably just wanted to give like a Lucy ass shot in this chapter or something. I don't know. Not really that funny anymore. But we got a nice little montage of everybody partying with the guildmates and everything. Feeling like it's back to normal. It's really nice and wholesome. I love it. With Lucy reminiscing, it's really noisy, but it's never boring here. Urza then goes up to Makarov, stating why they've returned temporarily. And now they need to try and find some info on the Five Dragon Gods. In the, and perhaps there's something in the old guild library. Really quick, I just want to mention. Since Urza is talking about the information about the 100 Years Quest. Does that mean the Lifseer kind of like changes the contract so they can get information from the guild. And to let them know about what's going on. Or maybe it's because like Lox and everyone kind of like got roped in with, out, from outside the quest. So there's a loophole or something. I feel like this needs to be explained because the whole condition of the 100 Years Quest is that you're not supposed to tell anybody outside of the people taking the quest to give information. Otherwise, you will get consequences or something. I feel like this needs to be explained. It's not super big, but I feel like this needs to be explained. And I feel like my explanation that I've left here like exempted the rule or changed the ruling just for this whole thing of taking down Ignea and Viernes and the whole team up with Selene and everything 
or just Loxus and Gajo being there kind of caused a loophole. I don't know. It's just something I wanted to mention. But as the scene continues, Marco just says, there aren't any books. And Ursus kind of being like, but if we just looked for something, we might, and Makro says something that's honestly makes a hell of a lot of sense, saying like, Urza, listen, how many times do you think this guild hall has been destroyed? Most of our old books are gone by now, as Urza just distraught over this information, being like, if you really think about it, the fairy tale guild has been destroyed, I think, like three to four times in the overall series, maybe five, if I'm if I'm counting right. But yeah, they, it's been destroyed so many times in the main series that you're like, yeah, if there was a, a library in the main guild hall somewhere, yeah, a lot of the stuff there is definitely destroyed and burnt to ashes. I'm surprised, no, I'm just glad that Makarov brought this piece of information up because it would be like, yeah, we have these books that have been in the library for so long and after the guild hall has been destroyed so many times and like, bursts of flames and stuff like that he somehow managed to survive so go ahead and take all the information so, so yeah i just find that honestly kind of hilarious and really nice attention to detail because not only we're we not getting all the information that we need right away but also gives honest honest consequences for, for the future from the guild being destroyed so many times i doubt this was ever planted from the beginning but it's honestly nice that we got this little bit of dialogue Makes sense. But then Makarov begins to trail off being like, but that being the case, and then we cut to Lucy walking across the waterway as she tends to do, thinking about what's going on and how she hasn't been home in such a long time. Even the boat guy comes in and says the usual line telling Lu Lucy to be careful or else she'll fall into the river. Lucy then reminisces that she hasn't been back in her apartment since the quest started as she reminisces about the f end of Fairy Tale in the Fair last chapter, seeing that it's already been a month since it started. Wait a minute, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. I remember, did I remember the song? It's only been a month, a month, since they started the quest, since the end of Fairy Tale. You know, it makes a lot of sense. I don't know why for some reason I thought there was like a few, like a, maybe like a couple of months at least after the end of Fairy Tale. But no, it's only been a month. They took care of three dragon gods, fought Diablos, and made friends with Zeline. And had the whole extra battle of fairy tale thing and dealt with the left the the left here arc and stuff like that all in a single month no actually that kind of tracks it never said that they were taking months on this quest either way it's honestly kind of surprising it's just a thought that came to mind i didn't really think that it was only over a single month since they started but very impressive that they got so far into this whole quest within a single month so i find that pretty cool as lucy opens the door to her apartment with the chapter ending with the saber tooth killed in her living room as Sting, Rogue, Yukino, and Minerva along with Lecter and Frosh are greeting Lucy. With Lucy in shock and surprise being like what the hell are you guys doing here with Makarov ending the chapter saying it's Sabretooth. So now then Sabretooth is gonna play a role in here. The twin dragons Sting and Rogue, two of my favorite dragon slayers are here now. Seems like they're gonna play a role. I want them to take play a role in this and maybe they'll help fight Viernes in this upcoming arc with them. And if they have information that could lead to these guys, that'll be really good. And it's nice to tie in the Dragon Slayers that we've seen because right now we've got dra the Dragon Slayers of Fairy Tale only. And now we're getting the Dragon Slayers from Sabretooth. I just can't wait to see more of this. I feel like with such a dragon heavy focus, the dragon slayers kind of play a big role in it, even though I do like the concentration of just core main team of fairy tale, Natsu, Lucy, Urza, Grey, and Wendy, Happy and Carla being just the main group that we've followed this whole time with other side characters being introduced. I just find it nice to introduce the other side characters and the dragon slayers as a whole since this is a dragon centric arc, as I've just mentioned. So it's also really nice to see them again. But yeah, with Makaro saying that something's up with Sabretooth, perhaps they came to Lucy to tell them about some information they found. It could be about the Dragon Gods, but I don't know if they'll, they know about it. Or maybe maybe this was told by Makaro or something. Or maybe they were just waiting for Lucy for some weird reason. I don't know. But there's definitely a reason to go about this, most likely playing a role in the next arc. But either way, that was a really nice chapter. I enjoyed it. Very chill. I liked that we got some more stuff with Diablos, and now they're off on their own adventures to find the ancient weapon that could take down the, the dragon gods and the fairy tale guild are off to try and find information on ignia and viernes and their location and now sabertooth is involved so i'm all here for it but what did you guys think of this chapter leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below as well as theories for what do you think is going to happen in this upcoming arc and sting and rogues role in this whole thing and sabertooth 
as a whole since the main saber tooth group is here with us right now and as always don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos it really does help and it shows you guys really enjoy the channel and the fairy tale content i make here and it shows you guys want me to keep it going both of us and done i hope you guys enjoyed and i hope you all have an awesome day